Welcome back everyone. Today I installed the Tusk D-Sport tires on my CRF 250L. I'll save my thoughts on them till the end, but I will ask you to uh, take it easy on me. Um, this is my first time ever installing motorcycle tires or changing motorcycle tires, and I only got 30 minutes of sleep last night, so my brain isn't working at full capacity. So, with that in consideration, let's get to work. Today we're going to be swapping over my stock tires on my CRF 250L to the Tusk D Sports. These are the, I should say, infamous Trails IR, sorry, IRC Trails GP, and this is the 21F and the rear one is the 22R. These tires are actually all right for the road and they're okay for gravel roads, but going beyond that, they're pretty crap, to be honest. I mean, they're, they're good tires, don't get me wrong, but they're not great. So I'm going with the Tusk D Sport, um, mainly because most of the things I've seen about them are pretty good. And I figure, you know what, they're inexpensive, so I'll try them out myself. I will be giving the weights for each tire. That way you can see what the unsprung mass difference is going to be as well as a few other comparisons along the way. So let's get to removing the front one first. Now to try to stay in the spirit of doing this as if I was on the trail, I will again be limiting myself as usual to only the tools that I would have um, that or that I will have when I'm on the trail slash on the road so I don't get to use any of my normal shop tools. These pinch bolts don't need to be um, done off all the way, just enough so that they uh, aren't clamping this. It would probably be a good idea to loosen this and the rear axle bolt while the bike is still on the ground, but uh, I forgot to do that. That smells like formaldehyde, like the, uh, if you ever dissected animals in science class back in middle school or high school, that's what that air smells like. Kind of gross. So something I did before I got to this point was I aired down the tires to just over 10 PSI. I didn't really pay attention to what the actual number was. And then... I just drove around my driveway doing some, you know, tight, low speed circles for, I don't know, three or four minutes. Not too long, but long enough to let the tires really squish and squash around to make them a little more pliable. So I'm gonna start with the, with the uh, valve stem on my left hand side. And then we're gonna go in here with the big lever. Just very gently peel that up. That is a much thinner tube than the one that I have. And I will inspect it very carefully to make sure I didn't pinch it on its way out. And then these will actually become my spare tubes, assuming they're still in good condition. And then I got some heavy duty tubes that I'll be putting in the new tires. Yeah, I got that backwards. You wanna get both sides, you wanna get the rim inside the tire and then pull it out. I was, I got the procedure backwards for putting it on. So there's the old tire. And because I am smarter than, than I look, but only half as smart as I sound, I have the new tire baking out in the sun to warm it up and make it more pliable. All right, let's do this quickly before this tire cools down too much. Here are the tires side by side. This is the front, and directionally forward is, let's make sure I have, okay. So this would be both with directional forward that way, 
This one weighs eight and a half pounds. This one weighs eight pounds. Keep in mind that this one does have almost a thousand miles on it, so that could be part of the difference. Um, and then this one, I weighed it with the tube and weighs nine pounds. This one weighs eight and a half pounds with the tube, so you're adding one pound with the uh, heavy duty tube and this new tire. The next step is to add some tire talc in both the tire and on the new tube. This is to act as sort of a dry lubricant because um, if you don't understand what the purpose of this is, get a brand new tire and a brand new tube and try and fit the new tube in the new tire without the rim and tell me how easy that goes. Um, I did it just to see and it is very difficult and if you don't add some sort of lubricant, um, I even saw a guy on YouTube, I think his name was Adam Riemann, Adam Ryman, and he uses uh, like grease, like heavy duty axle grease, general grease, and he greases the, uh, the tube, which makes it very slippery and makes pinch flats pretty much non-existent. The problem that I see with adding grease, especially if you don't have a rim lock, is the grease will get on the bead and in the bead seat, because grease gets everywhere, and it will, um, I, in my opinion, from what I understand of physics, uh, it'll make the tire more likely to slip on the rim, especially the lower pressures, and again, especially without a rim lock. I'm not running a rim lock, and uh, tire talc, this exact kind, is approved in aviation, and if you don't know anything about aviation maintenance, they are extremely strict on what you can and cannot use um, for pretty much anything. Um, they even, like, it, you don't just use a certain kind of lubricant in aviation. You have to use a specific brand. And it's, the, the aviation maintenance is extremely strict on everything. So if it's good enough for aviation, it's good enough for me. One small warning about talcum powder, though, is apparently it is quite carcinogenic. So... If you're only, you know, getting occasional exposure to it, like doing tires, you're probably just fine. But if you're using it, like, as a body powder, maybe not the best idea. But for this, you know, you'll, you'll probably be fine. It's just something to think about, though. So get a good amount on there. You can use baby powder or other body powders that have talc in them if you can find them these days, because again, the the, uh, the cancer problems that people talk about. Um, make sure it doesn't have all those extra additives like scents and moisture things, uh, because those I've heard can start eating away at the rubber and sometimes the rim. Um, they might have, you know, a pretty high level of acidity. So that's why for basically the same price you can get actual tire talc which is just pure talcum powder. Now this tire does not have a marking on it for where it's weighted. So we can pretty much put the valve stem anywhere on the tire. More expensive tires will have Sorry if most of that was out of frame. I got like 30 minutes of sleep last night, so forgive me for messing a, a few things up here and there. Uh, more expensive tires will have the balance mark on them because the factory will take the time to actually balance the tire. But these Tusk D Sports are made in China and they're very inexpensive, so I'm just gonna take a guess that where the cost cutting happened was um, in not balancing out the tire. All right, so now the tire is, the tube is nicely set in the tire. I'm gonna grab my pump and then just pump a little bit of air into the tire just to make sure that it uh, holds air and doesn't leak. You don't wanna fill it up too much because you could burst the tube. 
that seems to be holding just fine. So we can let the air back out. It will usually be pretty obvious if it's not going to hold air. All right, big jump cut. As you can probably tell, that was deteriorating quickly. And so I just needed to cut and go to my own, uh, my own thing and So let's hope this goes a little bit better and that I don't get a pinch flat because that would really suck. And I've got the Motion Pro Bead Buddy here. This is the trail size one which I'm hoping will work as well as the big one, even though it's super tiny. Finally, and now I get to see if I have to do this all over again as to uh, whether or not I pinched the tube. Well, my valve stem here is nice and straight, which means I didn't twist the tube in there. This is the valve, the valve core. And you want to make sure that it is absolutely clean when you go to put it in, otherwise it won't seal properly and you'll just have a slow leak that you won't be able to find because there's no leak in the tire. Twenty. That's good enough for now, I can do the rest on the bike. And I think it's holding air. So that is a fully mounted Tusk D Sport front tire. A little bit of a mess, but I think overall it's a success. So I'm gonna put this one back on. You're gonna get mad at me, but I'm not actually gonna show you doing the uh, the installation and everything of the rear tire because it's just it's exactly the same as this I'm up here not down there look up here there you are it's exactly the same as this but with more cursing and more frustration again otherwise it's absolutely identical but I'll still give you a comparison of the two tires um, so I'll see you then All right, there is one more thing that I need to say about the front before we go to the back, and that is to make sure that you line up the front forks correctly. So the process for that is to cinch down on the axle bolt, or, you know, I guess it's not just the axle. It doesn't need to be super tight, just snug, because these clamp bolts are what do the actual clamping, but when, well, you'll see that there's some movement here. You want it to be in its happy spot, um, and then you can temporarily clamp down in these. But once you have the bike back on the ground, loosen these off again, and then hold the front brake and push the forks. 
into the ground so that the forks are able to go through their whole travel, or at least, you know, the most of it. And that will get this aligned right where it wants to be and then cinch them down because if you don't, let's say it's way in here, then you clamp them down. The forks are gonna bind and they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be scraping inside themselves and it's just, it's gonna be really bad for your handling and uh, pretty much bad all the way around. I also did have to, just for the ease of installation, remove the brake caliper and put that back on. Um, just make sure you get it on the disc properly and you get it bolted up in a place where it's happy. And then before you bolt it up tight, before you bring it to torque, do that same procedure of hold the brake and then um, push the, the forks into the ground so that it seats where it wants to be. And then while you're still holding the brake, go ahead and tighten up the bolts. And then that will get the brake caliper mated to your disc in here where it, where it is happiest. So um, those are two pretty important things to get right about the front end. All right, things to uh, think about when taking off the rear wheel is first, loosen off the nut. And you want the nut, if your bike will allow for it, you want the nut to be on the right side of the bike and the axle to go from the left to the right. That way, when you're trying to get this thing off in the field, you're pushing down on your wrench and not lifting the bike up. Now, on a bike this heavy, that probably doesn't make as much of a difference, but when you're, when you're out in the field, every little bit helps so loosen that off and once you get this nut most of the way off tap it with your wrench to get the axle pushed through and then remove it all the way get your adjuster off on this side and then you can pull out the axle and get the adjuster off on this side and then the wheel you'll have a hole wheel is able to move forward pull the chain up and off and try and get it around here so it's not in the dirt and then just uh, gently pull the wheel out and then from there, the process is the same as the front. Okay, here are the two tires side by side, um, rotation going that way. I believe I, I looked all over the sidewall of the tusk. Um, it doesn't seem to have a directionality to it. And that kind of makes sense because it is a symmetrical tread pattern. This one is an asymmetrical tread pattern. And uh, this one weighs about 12 or 13 pounds. This one weighs the best part of 12 pounds. So you are adding quite a bit of weight with this one. Um, and the tube in this one adds half a pound over the tube in this one. Again, granted that this one is worn down quite a bit. And if you can see at the top of the screen there, there is, you know, it is starting to square off a little bit where this one is brand new and has a fairly round profile. So, uh, this one was not terrible to get off and you can see that the, uh, the carcass is pretty soft. This one is very hard and I'm going to get working at this one off camera again because it's just going to be the same as the other one but harder and I want it to be nice and warm while I'm doing it so I'll meet you back when this tire is mounted. You know you guys and girls uh, my uh, analytics say there are three percent women that watch my channel so um, you will not believe that this rear tire was actually easier than the front tire to put on. That just blows my mind. This one went on actually very quickly. And a tool that I, at least from this point, highly recommend is one of these things. This will pull your valve stem through the rim because uh, there are two primary ways to get the valve stem through the rim. One is to um, put the tube in the tire first, pull out this, uh, pull out the valve stem part then put the nut on and then try and get the, t the rim on with the tube already in it. The second way is to get the rim half, get the tire halfway on the rim, then put the tube in and then try and fish that with one of these. Um, and that way worked better for me, but you can see how this is slightly uh, canted over. That means that the tube is not perfectly aligned with the tire. So I'm going to try and adjust that if I can. Um, hopefully I can get that worked out. Otherwise, um, just a little bit of cleanup and then putting it back on the bike. Okay, welcome back. Today I put the Tusk D-Sport tires on my CRF250L. And this is the very first time I'm riding on 
a gravel road. Uh, I did ride a little bit of tar over here to get to the gravel. And I can tell the front wheel especially is out of balance, so I'm going to have to probably spin the tire 180 degrees in the rim. Uh, and these tires do not have any balance marks on them, which is inconvenient. Because I can feel the front kind of doing this number. Other than that, it feels alright. It definitely feels less skittish than the IRC tires. And these tires have been on for only a mile or two. So they are not even remotely broken in yet. And that's why we're out here. We're here to break them in. Braking is a lot better. It's like having snow tires in the winter is what it feels like. The front's a little slippery, per se. Um, that's actually pretty nice. I don't mind that. Now these tires are about a pound heavier each than the IRC tires. I had my blinker on. See, now if I don't uh, cancel my blinker within the first gear change, I usually completely forget about it. Alright, so now I'm getting some floatiness on both the tires, mainly the front. Got some washboard. Something I'd never felt on the other tires that I felt on this just there is I got to a softer spot in the gravel and I could feel myself slowing down quite a bit. Now I'm not as big of a hater on those IRC tires as it seems most of the internet is, but I do not really like them. I think they're just okay. They're all right on the road and they're all right on a nice gravel road, but in loose and deep loose gravel they're horrible. It almost killed me uh, a couple times, and on uh, anything remotely sandy or muddy, they're pretty bad. But they are labeled a 70-30 tires and 70% street, 30% off-road, and that's directly from IRC, so they're not even 50-50 tires. So you can't really blame them too much for not being all that great. Something I said back there, but it was too windy, I'll say it again, is that the balance actually doesn't seem that bad. I think I'm just going to leave it. Now, I do have these tires at a 30 PSI rear, 25 PSI front, which is pretty high, especially considering I'm not really loaded up on the bike right now. It's just me, my tank bag, and then my tool bag. So... It should only get better from here if I drop the PSI a little bit. Now this is very slippery slidey. I don't know if you can tell that. The ride is also a little worse, but I think that's because of the extra pound of unsprung weight in both the front and the back. That's just a guess. These are not light tires. These, 
these tires hook up way, way better than those, uh, than those IRC tires. Those tires, you slide around when you're accelerating that hard. These tires, they grip really, really well. Something I noticed at that corner is that I am much more confident to lean the bike over with these tires, even with power. Those IRCs, I just babied it around every single corner, especially with gravel. I just had really no confidence to lean that bike. I think I'm really going to like these tires in terms of drivability. Putting them on, especially that front one, that was just miserable. The back one wasn't as bad, but... You know, for my first time ever doing tires, I think I did pretty well. It did take me a couple hours though, which is a little, little saddening to me. But you're never good at anything the first time you do it, that's for sure. You know, in terms of road noise, these tires are actually pretty good. They don't sound any louder than the IRC tires. And uh, no significant vibration, so. And again, this is at a 35 or 30 rear 25 front PSI. If you drop them, you might get different results. Tobacco or something. Yep, there's a backhoe. You know, he probably could have pulled over a little more, but I mean, this is not a busy road. So loose stuff, this uh, this setup isn't super great on either, but I'm pretty sure my IRC tires, if I would have done that at the same lean angle, at the same speed with the same throttle, I probably would have binned it. So, so far I'm uh, very happy with this purchase, and uh, hopefully they'll be good tires for my um, the MTWAT uh, Minnesota Transit Wisconsin Adventure Trail that'll be going on next week. So. Until next time, see ya.